welcome to BSF Recovery Team. A few videos ago we showed you we had an epic failure on the wrecker and it was kind of scary. Then we showed you how it was my own fault. Then we gave you some tips on how to properly maintain a Dana 60 front axle in a four-wheel drive truck. We also said when we were done we still had a problem with the brakes. And I told you I thought I knew what that problem was. What I'd like to do now is explain to you how I came to that diagnosis. In order to do that, first we have to revisit the failure again. So let's take a look. I started climbing the hill and right about here. You can uh, hear the rear dualies spin out. That tells me that that's when the failure happened. That's when the hub started walking off of the spindle and broke the lockout hub. Of course, my first instinct was to let off of the gas and step on the brake. That's when the engine stalled and the brake pedal went to the floor. So, we started rolling backwards. Of course, I stepped on the brake pedal again and it still went to the floor. Okay, why did my brake pedal go to the floor? Well, on a Dana 60 axle, you have your uh, brake anchor here, and uh, the inner pad just floats in the brake anchor like this. And uh, of course, this surface here is held in place by the rotor, and this surface back here by the caliper. So, when the rotor started coming off of the spindle, the caliper pushed my brake pad out it fell right out and onto the ground. My caliper had to extend quite a bit further, letting my brake pedal go all the way to the floor. Now, some of you may know that the brake system in this truck is what they call a split system. And it's designed with a valve normally called a combination valve, that when you lose brakes on one end of the vehicle, the valve goes off center, blocks off the side with the problem, so you still have brakes on the other end of the vehicle. In my case, on the second pump, the brake pedal still went to the floor. Why didn't our combination valve do its job on the second pump and turn the red brake light on and block off the front brakes so we still had rear brakes? Well, that's our first clue as to what's still wrong with the brake system in this truck. You see, in order to do its job, the combination valve needs to sense brake pressure on at least one half of the system. Some of our other clues are that even though the brake caliper overextended, the piston didn't extend far enough to create a leak. And I inspected the truck and found no other leaks in the system. Full of fluid. And our last clue, of course, is even though I put the brakes all back together, I still couldn't pump them up and build any pressure. Well, that leads me to one conclusion, that my master cylinder failed. And this is actually kind of common when the brake pedal is pushed all the way to the floor on an older vehicle like this that uh, hasn't had its brake pedal pushed all the way to the floor for many, many, many years. And that is they build up a little bit of a ridge inside the master cylinder where the piston stops all the time. And when my caliper overextended and I pushed the brake pedal past that point where it normally stops, it ruined the piston seals in the master cylinder. And then the master cylinder will no longer build any pressure. It develops an internal leak. Part of the reason I know this is I have a brake pressure gauge in the truck. Let's go take a look. Here's our brake pressure gauge. If you watch, when I press on the pedal slow, it doesn't move and the pedal goes right to the floor. And even if I pump the brakes, I still can't build any pressure. If there was air in the system, by repeated pumps on the pedal, I would be able to build some pressure. So that tells me that my master cylinder has failed. We have to replace it. Fortunately, the one on the old broken wrecker is relatively new. So, we're going to go steal that one. 
And I have some tricks of the trade to share with you on replacing a master cylinder. When replacing any major brake component, the biggest difficulty that most people have is bleeding the brakes. In the case of replacing a master cylinder, that all starts with proper bench bleeding. If you notice here, we have the master cylinder set up in a vise on the bench. And we have a bench bleeder kit set up on the master cylinder. Master cylinder is full of fluid. And now what we do is we stroke the master cylinder, pump the fluid through the lines back into the reservoir. The proper way to do this is with nice, slow, even strokes. And the biggest key is you have to do it until all of the air bubbles are out of the lines. Even the little teeny tiny ones that you can barely see. If you do it too fast, you'll aerate the fluid and then it'll take forever to get all the air out. Now, with the master cylinder properly bench bled, we can put it on the truck. We'll leave the bleeder kit on until we're ready to hook up the lines. Now that we have our new used master installed, the next step in the bleeding process is to bleed it right here at the lines. So again, nice, medium, slow, even strokes are what's required. And loosen the line up just a little bit and then Jeff will you slowly push down the pedal and hold it okay we're getting straight fluid out of that one now we did have a little air come out so we'll tighten that up And then you can let the pedal up now, Jeff. Now we'll bleed out this one. Open it up just a little bit. Okay, Jeff, push down again. Okay, we got lots of air out of that one. We'll have to do it again. You can let it up. Push down again. There we go. Now we're getting good fluid out of there. You can let it up. Now, one more. We're going to bleed this little line here for our brake pressure gauge. Okay, push down again, Jeff. And that one's got good fluid coming out. Now we can bleed it at the calipers, both front and rear. <laughs> Hi there. Okay, we bled the rear brakes. Now we're going to bleed the front calipers. And there's several ways you can do this. Of course with a pressure bleeder or like I am here with a vacuum bleeder. You can also use the two-person method one on the brake pedal and one down here on the bleeders but just remember what I said about if you pump the brakes too fast you can aerate the fluid and then you'll have a real hard time getting all the air out. One little tip I've learned about vacuum bleeding the brakes is when you pull the vacuum away, sometimes you can get a little air that sucks back into the bleeder. So it's a good idea to let it gravity drip a little bit before you close the bleeder. One last tip. If you're running out in the mud in the crap like I do, or even if you're in the northern states 
where you get snow and stuff like that. Save yourself a little headache later on and put the caps back on the bleeders. It really makes a difference. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling and maybe we'll see you out there in the woods. Hey, look at that. We got brake pressure again. <laughs>